my jet lag right now is so bad. I don't even feel like I can talk until I get a coffee. I don't normally get really bad jet lag, honestly, but I'm feeling it from being in Tokyo. But anyways, welcome back to another weekly vlog. I'm back guys with the regular Sunday uploads. Oh my God, I'm like out of breath. So for those of you guys who don't know, I have an apartment in LA because I have an office in LA for my two brands. I feel like most of you guys know that by now, but for those of you guys who are new here, that's why I am in LA or that's why I'm in LA sometimes. I've been in LA for like three days, been in the office with my team. When I'm in LA, I pretty much do nothing besides hang out with um, my friends that I also work with um, or I'm in the office all day. Uh, I don't do much else when I'm in LA, honestly, ever. Which honestly, I don't mind at all. But I'm just packing my bag. Here's my outfit for today. I'm wearing these um, vintage Levi shorts that I think were jeans and that I cut a long time ago. I honestly don't remember, but they're really uneven, so I'm guessing that was me. And then I'm just wearing this vintage leather belt. And then this sweater I think Mad Happy sent me. It's really cute. And yeah, gonna head in now. Whoa! That's really good, Jack. You're in my seat. Say hi, Devin. <laughs> the dairy boy. <laughs> made these slipper samples for Dairy Boy and they're like hilarious and kind of ridiculous. They're just like a sample and they <laughs> came back looking crazy. Some of the samples that we receive um, come back looking absolutely insane and these slippers are one of them, but I do wear them in the office. And um, I forgot to change my shoes. So I was going to go to the market right now, but I feel like I cannot wear these slippers in public. Officer, I got one question for you. Oh, you what are those? <laughs> okay, just got home. I'm gonna make myself a little snack. I'm going to the gym with some of my friends and then we're gonna grill. We're gonna grill some steaks, but I really need to have a snack first. I got these dates that came in this really cute box and they are um, California dates and they just look delicious. I'm just gonna um, take a date, get the pit out, and I'm gonna put some peanut butter in like two of them. And then I'm hoping that will kind of tide me over until dinner, I'm really hungry. I find my energy to be so much better when I really focus on eating whole meals instead of a lot of snacking. So I don't want to spoil dinner because I want to have a big dinner. I know these are better. I think if you freeze them or put them in the fridge, it looks pretty good. Mm. Dates are my favorite. I'm gonna also cut up an apple. I just forgot that I had these. some insomnia cookies. I'm gonna warm them up a little bit. One second. So I thought I would do a little story time because whenever I order insomnia, I obviously think about this. 
This story will all make sense, just hang with me. So I feel like a lot of you guys know by now that I went to high school at a ski racing academy. The ski racer in high school was competing all throughout high school, went to like a sports specific boarding school. Really fun, really crazy. That experience shaped me so much, just who I am and it just really shaped me into the person that I am today. So why I'm even bringing this up is because my school was pass fail, which meant that I did not get grades in high school, which made this school even more untraditional. It was pass or fail, but we got like very in-depth written reviews from each class based on what our performance was, our strong suits and our weaknesses. So when you apply to college, you obviously have to do standardized testing. And then the school basically submits this like big written review on who you are as a student instead of submitting grades or a GPA. So I'm sure you guys can imagine a lot of colleges are kind of like, what? is this this is definitely different and some colleges are fine with it some colleges are like what am i supposed to do with this application it's not a problem if you're going to a ski racing school because my high school is an olympic training academy honestly most of the kids from my high school went and skied d1 college or went on the u.s ski team and skied professionally i pretty much was done with skiing and quit my senior year which was like not the usual at the school. But when I was applying to schools, I was not applying to ski schools. So I realized all the schools that I really wanted to go to for college, it was probably gonna be difficult without having grades. So, so I did not apply to many schools because I kind of just like knew I wasn't gonna get into the schools that I wanted to. I knew I wanted to go to a more creative school, but I still did want to go to a liberal arts school. So my plan pretty much was to go to UConn because I would be able to be in state. UConn in Connecticut is actually like quite a hard school to get into now, especially being from Connecticut. So it was amazing that I even got in, honestly. But the reason I applied to UConn, not knowing if I was gonna get in, was because I was going to go there for a semester, get really good grades, and then be able to transfer, but I would have a GPA, and I would have grades, and I could show another college that I basically could perform really well grade-wise. The only other school that I applied to that was I got into Syracuse University, um, but I went and visited, and it was just like not, at that point in my life, my vibe. I feel like a lot of people might not know that I actually went to UConn, in Connecticut for one single semester. And then I transferred to the new school in New York. Um, and that's where I ended up really going to college. But I did go to UConn for a semester. And this is where the cookies come into play. I actually worked at Insomnia Cookie while I was going to school at UConn. I worked all throughout college. I never didn't have a job in college. And I worked at Insomnia. And that was my first job in college. And you did get free cookies working there. Still obsessed with the cookies. I still have my shirts, my insomnia shirts from working there. <laughs> I love them. But this is actually kind of sad. I was delivering cookies and a lot of the sororities and the fraternities uh, would order cookies. And um, I didn't rush or anything because I knew I was transferring. Um, and I felt like that made it harder to make friends a little bit. I did meet some really nice people there, but, but I did find it hard to not be a part of Greek life at a school like that. But when I was delivering cookies to a lot of these sororities and fraternities and I was in classes with a lot of these people, people were actually like so mean and were making fun of me for delivering cookies. So also people would never tip me. I don't know if that's just like college kids are, but I really didn't get tips. But yeah, that's my story time about insomnia cookie. I feel like I have so many stories like that uh, from college or high school or I feel like a lot of the times people think if you're an influencer you didn't have like a life before being an influencer and um, I'm not gonna lie sometimes I'm like nostalgic about my life before all of this not that I don't love what I do and that, not that I'm not happy but it is just crazy I feel like I have so many not even like work related or college related, but I just feel like I have so many good stories and uh, again, not even about work, just like about like the silly things I used to do or like experiences I used to have. I feel like this got like sad. <laughs> not trying to be emo, but I just feel like the internet bullies the silly out of people. And I don't actually think everyone who has affected me in that way has actually been trying to bully me or be mean to me 
and also I'm not saying that I'm not actively putting out content. Like I could go get a different job and, um, you know, not, not do all this and not upload these videos. Like I like what I do. I'm just, it is sort of interesting how, um, some parts of my personality have been sort of lost. I know I've also like grown up a lot, but I feel like a lot of like the silly moments, again, not work related, just like looking back in like high school and college um, and who I was like before becoming an influencer. I feel like I'm, I just have this like, like these walls up and it's not because, obviously I do have a hard time trusting people, absolutely, but it's more because um, I don't think it's human nature to receive so much feedback, good and bad, about everything about mm, the way I look, about my life. Um, and I feel like it's maybe like dulled down some parts of my personality that I like loved about myself. And I've always been like kind of silly and um, it's not human to live your life fully online and um, have so many people, you know, criticizing, complimenting, you know, all the things. I think a lot of people and influencers talk a lot about how the criticism, you know, how the criticism can change their mood or behavior, or like how your brain functions. But I think it's equally, you know, as interesting and maybe, you know, compliments can also, I think, affect how your brain functions and works and all that. With all that being said, I actually am trying to find a new therapist this week. So I'm really excited about that. I'm in a big stretch of not going to therapy. Like you guys would probably be like, um, you probably should, you know, schedule an appointment. Not even because I have anything bad going on in my life, but yeah, I'm really excited about finding a new therapist and um, I'm a big believer in that everyone should go. It doesn't really matter what the situation is. I think it's really important if you can afford it. Um, and it's something that I definitely want to do. So I'll let you guys know how that goes because it is really hard to find therapists. And um, I'm really funny. I have a very hard time opening up to people about a lot of specifics and going back. The funny part of that is that I do this thing around people where if I'm uncomfortable or if I feel like someone is like intimidated by me or doesn't know, you know, what I'm gonna be like or if I feel like someone doesn't like me or if I feel like someone, or if I know someone is like, said something bad about me, I will word vomit and I will tell them like personal stuff about me and vulnerabilities that I have and insecurities that I have to make other people feel more comfortable. Like I'll just sort of dump shit on people's laps in order for them to see that I'm like a person and a human with feelings and flaws. And I feel like that probably happens to a lot of people. I don't know why I do that. Um, well, I know why I do it. I try to like, it's just like, I think showing people that this is my thing of why I do this. I think uh, social media, it's obviously a highlight reel that my life might look perfect sometimes. And when I meet people, when I'm getting that vibe from someone, I just want them to like immediately know that I'm just like a person and I want to relate to people and I want them to feel comfortable around me and I don't want them to feel like, um, I think I'm like above them. It's not always worked. It like usually leaves me feeling way more anxious than like good. So that's something I need to stop doing. But it's funny that I do that, but then I do have a hard time getting into like details of like other stuff from like a long time ago. Um, but yeah, it's funny. I actually realized that I do this because one of my friends was with me. I was out to dinner with a group of people and my friend just like was watching me do this to someone who I am uncomfortable around. And this person has not been very nice to me in the past. And I just sort of like, I was just dumping out all this information. And my friend like sat me down seriously and was like, you've got to stop doing this because it's too much and it's not helping you. These people could just like weaponize everything you're saying and it's not going to make them change and it's not going to make them treat you differently. And I was like, whoa, wow. It was so real and it was honest and it like didn't hurt my feelings, but I was just like, oh shit. 
And uh, while I was like, oh fuck, yeah, like I need to stop doing that. It was just nice that like my friend called me out for doing that. And it probably wasn't like the easiest thing for her to say, but she was just like, Paige, you've, you've got to stop. And I was like, tea. Guys, I'm really bad. I only eat the inside of cookies. Like I like the soft gooey part and then I leave the outsides of insomnia. I'll eat a whole, normal cookies, I'll eat the whole thing. But yeah, I need to shower and get into bed. So I'm gonna go do my skincare now. Okay, before I sign off for the day, I just thought I would quickly turn on the camera. And I wanna run you guys through a little bit of my skincare routine. I feel like I do a lot of makeup on this channel, but I don't talk much about skincare because honestly, until this year, I didn't really have a skincare routine. I obviously get sent so many products. I used so many products back in the day, but I thought I would walk you guys through my skincare routine thanks so if you've been following my channel for a minute now you know that i like using high and low products that means that i get some of my skincare from the drugstore i get some of my skincare that is very high performance that's expensive and then some of it's like middle ground i think they all have a purpose i think that you don't need to have all really expensive products to have really nice skin i love my drugstore skincare products a lot and i use them daily but now that i'm 26 i definitely am prioritizing wearing sunscreen more. And as someone who loves to be in the sun, I will live the rest of my life that way, uh, for better or for worse, probably for worse for my skin, but I just love being in the sun. That's not gonna change, but I'm definitely more into wearing sunscreen now. I put lotion on my body every single night before I go to bed, and I feel like I just have a really good skincare routine now, so let's go through it. These pads are everything to me. I legitimately think I've been through 10 packages of these toning pads. Before I get into this brand, I do want to mention these products are my high level products. They're, they're pretty much the only like very high end, um, you know, more advanced skincare that I use every single day. And the brand is barefaced. I feel like it has like a cult following a little bit. Like if you know, you know. The founder of the company, her name is Jordan Harper. She's a board certified nurse practitioner and she started this brand because she felt like there was a gap in the market and she, and she was working in the space and she just felt like there was a gap and she created products for her clients. And now it's a brand that is available online. I was gifted these products first and I didn't use them for a while after I was gifted them. But one day I was digging through my gifting because I really needed toning pads because I was having a bit of a breakout on like my jawline neck area, which is where I get all my acne for the most part. And I started using these and I really haven't stopped ever since. My skin honestly does not feel clean unless I use a toning pad. Another thing about toning pads that I feel like is overlooked is I feel like it really like preps your skin and these expensive products that you use after are soak more into your skin and your makeup just looks better if you like sweep that excess dry skin and dirt off your skin. So I feel like this in itself mixed with a few of these other products that I use have made my skin look like bouncier, I guess, and just more healthy. And then I go in with the Overachiever by them. It has a lot of really amazing ingredients. It just makes my skin feel plump and then ready to go into my other skincare. I've also started using a bit of retinol. I love this product. I think it's super worth it. I feel like, I don't know, this is like part of getting older. <laughs> it's like using retinol, but I love theirs. And I also just love that I'm using, like my prep is all barefaced. So I love that that is like a trio, I guess. So that's my nighttime skincare routine. And, and then a product that I have to mention and just give a hats off to is this road glazing milk. I don't know what I was expecting, but I did not expect to love this as much as I do. I'm obsessed with it. Um, this to me is the best product out of their whole line. So for me, using a more expensive base, finishing it with like a road, um, love a lot of drugstore face lotions. I'm not the pickiest about my face lotion. I'm more picky about like the other products, the serums, the pads, the retinols. Those to me are supporting my skin barrier and then obviously i'm not going to use anything crazy fragrant i like a mild face lotion bare face has a lotion um i use a lot of different very mild lotions and then i do use thick um skincare lotion when i'm using a lot of makeup or i'm going to be on set all day and then i usually use this retinol at night before i go to bed 
that's my skincare routine. Oh, and I also got a code for these skincare products for you guys. Um, I've talked about these products before and they were kind enough to give me a code. So I will leave a code for you guys. And yeah, I'm gonna go to bed now and I will see you guys in the morning. I think my master is done again. You've gotten your master's before? Yeah, I really liked it. I have like really wide, a lot of stress. A lot, a lot of, of stress. Lot of stress, a lot of anxiety up in there. We all know Liv, if you don't know, now you know. Now you know. So Liv and I are basically gonna go, oh, go get our nails done right now. Oh, okay. We're going to actually get a coffee first and like a little bite to eat and then we're gonna go get our nails done. Olivia has a very booked and busy weekend, but she's making time for me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> One thing you guys need to know about Olivia is the girl is gonna be out on the weekend and she's gonna be at the table, she's gonna be at the rave. She's it's gonna called be... networking. For... But anyways, we are gonna go have like a little Saturday, a little chill Saturday. Olivia just helped me shoot something for Target out of the goodness of her own heart. And I booked her a blowout for tomorrow in return. <laughs> Um, but we're also gonna go to a polo match tomorrow, um, which I'm like, really excited about. We're going with the, yeah, we're going with Vuv to a polo match in LA while I'm here, and then um, I'm wearing a really cool look tomorrow, which I'm really excited to show you guys. And then um, I'm gonna be in LA at the beginning of next week. I have some stuff in the office, and then I have a podcast. Um, I'm filming. With who? I'm filming with um, Mariana Hewitt, the owner of Summer Fridays. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna go on her podcast and we're gonna talk about like business and uh, being a creator and owning a business and life. So that's something I'm really excited for. And then, yeah, so I'll be in LA next week for a little bit. And yeah, I'm gonna get this vlog up on Sunday. I'm going to Modern Pamper Salon in LA, which is where I always get my nails done. It's the best of the best and yeah okay we went to Erewhon and got a little bite to eat before our nails so I'm trying this mango smoothie is this a brand smoothie or a person smoothie I, I don't think so Malibu mango Malibu mango cheers it's really good it's not as good as the Hailey Bieber one but it's really good how much are these smoothies $19 each that's better than Hailey Bieber, it's like 22. Crazy. Okay. I've been wanting to try these coffee creamers by Chobani. So I'm gonna make Olivia and I a coffee with one. Do you want the pumpkin one or the sweet cream? Ooh, pumpkin. Okay. Okay, so I got sweet cream, vanilla, and pumpkin. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little bit of both. Okay, starting with our favorite cold brew. Liv, is this your favorite cold brew? Yes. It's so good. Some agave, splash of milk. It's really good, but you cannot add sweetener with it. I think it's already sweet. Mm. It's more coffee. Okay, guys, here is the outfit. I did a little get ready with me on my TikTok, so I didn't film a get ready with me on here, but I am obsessed with this outfit. I honestly haven't liked an outfit this much in a really long time. I feel like it's just very special and me. I've been dying to wear this outfit since I saw it on TikTok. The shoes are so cute. So we're about to head to the polo match now. I'm very excited.